Oyster Research Protocol – Water Quality The first step of this protocol is to collect a water sample from New York Harbor. Let's go to Agata to learn how to collect our water sample. So we're going to collect some water samples today. Um, so make sure you have a bucket and you have a line, and the line is attached to the bucket really well. And so it's important that you don't just throw your bucket over. You have to be able to tie it to the railing. So you don't have to do a perfect knot, just one that you think is secure. Okay. I also like to hold it in my hand while I'm throwing it over. Alright, so when you're throwing the bucket, when you're collecting the water, don't just throw it down. You have to get it at an angle so it scoops, right? So. It's important to remember that once you have your bucket of water, immediately place it in the shade to slow any changes to sensitive parameters, like temperature and dissolved oxygen. To measure temperature, we will be using a thermometer. Place the thermometer into the water and wait two minutes. When reading the thermometer, keep the bottom of the thermometer in the water so that the reading doesn't measure air temperature instead. Read and record the temperature in Celsius. To measure dissolved oxygen, we will be using Cometrix Colormetric Test Kit. Fill the provided sample cup with 25 milliliters of water and place one ampule tip side down into the water. Break the tip of the ampule in the water by pressing it against the side of the cup. Allow the ampule to fill with water from your sample. Next, take your ampule out of the cup and invert the ampule 20 times, allowing the bubble to reach the top of the ampule each time you invert. For my observations, I prefer to take the comparator out of the black case. Compare your ampule to the ones in the comparator. I recommend trying out different lighting situations to help you get the most accurate reading. Record your observation in parts per million, or milligrams per liter. Dispose of the remaining sample in your waste container, along with the used ampule. If you are repeating this test, make sure to rinse the sample cup before collecting a new sample from the bucket. To measure salinity, we will be using a hydrometer. Take the hydrometer and submerge it in the water. Make sure to fill the hydrometer up to the skinny part of the neck. Place the hydrometer on a flat surface. Tap the hydrometer down gently to release any air bubbles that may affect the reading. Come down to eye level with the hydrometer and read the position of the plastic pointer in parts per thousand. Record your observation. To measure pH, we will be using Lamotte's Precision pH Kit. Fill the square test tube to the top line with sample water. Add 10 drops of the wide range indicator solution. Cap the test tube and invert until the indicator solution and sample water are thoroughly mixed. Insert the test tube into the comparative viewer and insert one of the color standard cards into the right hand slot. I like to place a piece of white paper behind the comparative viewer to help me make the best comparison. Record your result and remember that pH does not have any units. To measure nitrates, we will be using AquaCheck water quality test strips for nitrates and nitrites. Dip a test strip into water for one second and remove immediately. Do not shake excess water from the test strip. 
Hold the strip level with pad side up for 30 seconds. Compare the nitrate test pad, pictured here at the tip of the strip, to the color chart on the bottle. Record the result, and note that this test is in parts per million. To measure phosphate, we will be using AquaCheck 1-Minute Phosphate Test. Fill the provided sample vial to the top line with water. Empty one packet of reagent powder into the vial. Cap and invert the vial for one minute, each time making sure the air bubble travels completely from bottom to top. Remove the cap and place the vial's bottom on the color chart's white circles. Look down through the vial and compare to the chart. Record your result within one to two minutes of adding the powder. Please note that this test is in parts per billion and will need to be converted into parts per million. To measure ammonia, we will be using Hox water quality test strips for ammonia. Fill the provided sample vial to the top line with water. Dip the strip into the water sample, moving the strip up and down in the water for 30 seconds. Make sure both pads are always submerged. Remove the test strip and shake off any excess water. Hold the test strip level, the pad side up, for 30 more seconds. To read your result, turn the test strip over so that the pads face away from you. Compare the color of the small pad to the color chart provided on the bottle. Read the result through the clear plastic of the strip. Note that this test is in parts per million. To measure turbidity, we will be using a turbidity tube. Fill up your turbidity tube with water from the bucket. It usually helps to have one person hold the tube while another pours water from the bucket. Or you can try to do this like I am. Although I'd like to offer some words of warning, you will probably get splashed hence the flip-flops. For this specific turbidity tube, the black and white circle within the tube, also known as the Secchi disc, can be manipulated by pulling the attached string. Other turbidity tubes may require two people, one to control the nozzle at the bottom of the tube to let the water out, and the other to observe when the Secchi disc becomes visible. The principles of both types of turbidity tubes are the same. You want to adjust the amount of water between your eye and the Secchi disc, and record your result when you can see the faint contrast between black and white. Measure the depth of the water using the ruler on the side of the tube. Record your observation in centimeters. Make sure to double check that all information is written onto your datasheet. Pick up any garbage that you left behind and rinse all of your equipment with fresh water to ensure the longevity of your materials. Last but not least, don't forget to send us your data. Thanks for watching and for more STEM resources, visit billionoysterproject.org.